fashionable to talk about, uh, you know, the hypothetical Donald Trump wall on the Mexican border to reduce a certain amount of illegal immigration to the United States. The reality of the world, or you could also point to uh, the Schengen Agreement in retreat between some European countries, but on a net basis, you have more migrants than ever in history, more people circulating across borders, more than a billion people who travel for tourism and business every single year, um, numbers that are projected to go up, up, up. Even if Europe, after having just let in a million uh, migrants last year, especially into Germany, even if they were to slow immigration, uh, the fact is that in ASEAN, in Southeast Asia, 700 million people just passed a free labor mobility agreement. Right? India has re restricted or lifted uh, uh, you know, visa requirements or, or sort of you know, uh, those onerous procedures that can all be done online. So most of countries, most of the time, across most of the world are making it easier uh, to travel, not harder. So if you're totally Eurocentric and, and Donald Trump is your bellwether for global migration, then you may believe that this is fantasy, but in fact, he lives in the fantasy world. The reality is that more people are on the move than ever before. And that's a very good thing for economies. I'm going to jump ahead because I know that you know, I want to be mindful of time. Um, I mentioned urbanization and connectivity are the two things that we have done, again, uh, uh, sort of continuously over time. This is a way more accurate map of human geography than any map that you have in your offices or classrooms. Uh, instead of depicting the world as just as cities as these equally sized little black dots, what you have here is the exact location of all 7 billion people in the world today mapped according to population density. So you can see that yellow are the most uh, uh, dense areas. And the ovals that we superimpose show you that cities are not really little black dots. They're these vast, long corridors. And I've looked at the growth of what you could call the Vancouver, Seattle, some people call it the Cascadia Corridor, Los Angeles to uh, Tijuana, Mexico, um, ac across uh, uh, regions, urban regions of, of Africa and Asia, the growth of these huge archipelagos that stretch hundreds of kilometers, really, that's the reality of, of uh, our, our, ge our urban geography in the world today. And each of these can have a population far larger than many countries in the world. They certainly have an economic weight greater than most countries in the world. The 45 or 50 cities that are the anchors of the world economy are way way more important economically than most countries in the world will ever be. In fact, there is no country in the world that could even survive without having as its uh, real anchor some stable economic, demographic, commercial center. I mean, pop quiz, can anyone name a stable country or a successful country that doesn't have as its root or doesn't have as its anchor a, a, a functioning city? Can you imagine an Afghanistan being the Switzerland of Central Asia until Kabul is a stable city? Can you imagine the resurrection, reconstruction of uh, Somalia until Mogadishu is a functioning city? You can't. Cities, we've had cities for 5,000 years. As I said at the beginning, and I'll reinforce the point over and over, empires rise and fall, cities come and go. We've had cities for 5,000 years. We will always have cities. I don't know about the rest. This is the map, um, not only of today, but really you could project this forward until the year 2030, 2035, 2040, 2050, people will be urbanizing at the breakneck speed that they are today and clustering in these areas. And the economic evidence is in the larger circles. You can see how, um, just how, how, uh, how strongly uh, economies, particularly in emerging markets, are driven by that one principal city. Now, that's not necessarily a good thing. 